then I'm going to be using is a purple piezos silk. Now you could use uh, say a uni thread or eight or something like that. So anyway, wax the thread, which is important that you do that. Sizes, the best sizes to tie are 14s and 16s. This is a 14 and the hook I'm using is a Kamasan, it's a B170 size 14. Now we start with thread at the eye and then just put down a layer of thread along the shank. Now you want to stop your thread about two, th two maybe three turns short of the barb. Just trim away the waist. Now for the tail and the hackle I'm going to use a, a, a neck. This is a Collins neck. Uh, basically, it's what I call it, it's a rusty dun. It's got a grey and light ginger through it. And it makes for an excellent dry fly. I mean, you'll see the, the grey colour in, in the feather. See it more on the back. Now, take one of the larger feathers for the tail. Now the reason I like to leave that two or three turns short of the barb is when I go to wind the tail on, I'm winding on to a, I'm putting tail onto a bare hook really. It's much easier to control. And the other thing is when you start to come back up, you keep the taper of the, the body, you don't lose that. So you're looking for around about half a dozen fibres. Spring them 90 degrees from the stem and then tear them away. Now there is a natural curve in these fibres. So I try and keep that, you see. Now length of tail, the length of the, the hook, just put that into your finger and thumb. Now I slightly angle the, the ends, these the rubbish ends, towards myself. So when I bring the turn of thread over to, it brings it, that, not that turn of thread brings it on top, you see. Then keeping a hold of the tips of the fibres, I bring the thread underneath. Once I'm by, I let it go. And then I can pull, tighten. And this will lift and separate the fibres. So it makes for a better tail, you see. Then I'm going to trim it around about, say, two thirds of the way up. Now for the rib, I'm just going to use a very a fine copper wire. Now, the original is fine gold wire. Now, I, I like the copper colour and the grey. It works extremely well. But just if to tie the original dressing, then you'll need to use a fine gold wire. So it's a single thumb to hold, and basically the full length of the cut ends of the tail fibres, so you're not it's, uh, messing up the taper of the body. Then, now originally it was herring used. Now the I'm you're going to use what they call sooty slate turkey. You can see it's a grey turkey. Now you could use, uh, say, grey lag goose, which is a great, it's a good sub for it. Any grey feather, I've even used secondary feathers from a mallard duck. So now you're looking round about because it's turkey, and I don't want it too thick. Round about four fibres or so. So as always, I'm looking for four, and there's five there, so. Just going to have to remove one, and there we are, tear it away. Now I'm going to catch this in by the finer tips. Now all I do is come across with a single turn and pull these in right as close to the tips as you dare go, and then tighten up. Now it's important that you do wax your thread, and just work your thread up the body. That point there. Now I'm going to wind the turkey towards myself. Just take your time. See, it makes a really nice body. At this point, I'm going to cross the thread. Now, I usually do a turn across the, in this case, the turkey, and a turn onto the hook just to hold. Now, the wax will hold that. And then I'm going to bring the wire up into my third turn, halfway up. Then I'm going to catch the turkey. Now the ash asks the pattern is you have to double the th have a thorax cover, and this is the way I double it. So I pull this back, 
and holding it down with the the rib as I go up. There we go. And across the thread, two or three turns to make sure it's caught in. Now as you can see where it's caught, then I bring this over. So that's my thorax doubled. Now she got like ear nymph type shape. You see? Really easy to do that. And then I'm going to trim it both away. Now to save bulk, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie in one of the hackles. One of the hackles here. Now you're looking for one and a quarter to one and say a half fibre length. No any more than that. Now I'm just going to remove some of the fluff from the bottom. Now the stems in these genetic hackles are quite thick. So you've really got to be careful. Now I've got a turn here to hold it and then wax your thread because I want to tidy up as I go down towards the eye and then trim away. This is because I'm using piers of silks, it's really much heavier. You've just got to compensate for that. Now you want a good turn right up tight against the body up where the thorax has been caught in and then work down with the, the underside of the feather facing towards the eye. Now if you do catch some fibres, just draw them back and do a turn to lock them out the way. Just lock them back out the way. And that's us there. Cross your thread. Good. Three or four turns to make sure it's not going to move. At this point, trim away the hackle. And even any fibres that you may have caught, just trim them away. Then, wax your thread. Tidy up. Just going to go black one here. There's a single fibre. I just want to make sure I've caught it. And then, touch your wax there. One, two, three, slide, nice and tight. And then there's a, some wax on to come off the thread. Just remove that with your, your nail. Trim away your thread. And then have a look. That's fine. Just your cover. Makes for a lovely fly. It's a neat, it's a good pattern to have in your box. And then, good. You don't have to varnish. I'm just going to do it. The wax gives it a lot of grip. All the way around. And then, using a piece of wire that's lying on your desk or your dubbing needle, just. Clean the eye out, 